Hi, <clears throat> we're looking today at this um, question which appeared on one of the specimen papers for the IGCSE Further Maths paper. Um, and as you can see, um, a chunky 13 mark question. So what I will be doing is um, to split this video into two halves just so that you are able to follow um, more um, clearly. We will in this video look at um, A and B part of the question and then in a separate video so look out for part two where we will tackle the um, C and D sections. Okay so let's begin with the part A. With the th this part A we've been given that our f of x is 7 add 4x minus 2x squared. And the question clearly says that um, f of x, given that it could be written as that, we should find p, q and r. Now, any time you have to express a quadratic in this form, that gives you the hint that you need to use the method of completing the square. Okay, so we're going to explore that in a minute. Now, in order for us to continue to see this equation as it usually is as ax squared plus bx plus c, mm -hmm, I'm going to have to just move things about. So this I'm going to rewrite as negative 2x squared add 4x add 7. I just decide to write it this way so it's in a form that looks familiar and more friendly to manipulate. Now um, we know with completing the square that we can only do that when the coefficient of the x squared term is a 1. Okay so the way we can achieve that with this question is to do this. So um, I call this a curtain. So I put a curtain in between the 4x and then the constant term. Okay, And then I'm going to deal with the left hand side uh, separately. I will rewrite this in such a way that I have 1 as coefficient of my x squared term. What I'm going to try to do is to factor out just the negative 2. Mm -hmm just so that I have 1 as coefficient of the x squared. Please notice that I am not factorizing an x, I'm just factorizing just the coefficient of my x squared. So that gives me negative 2 and then I will be left with x squared minus 2x behind um, that curtain. And I'm going to put the plus 7 there as usual. Now I'm going to complete the square for my square bracket. And what will that look like? You could do that on the side and follow along um, once you've been able to figure this out. But you should take one of the x's, mm -hmm, your minus, and then half of the coefficient of the x, which is a 1. Okay, square it, and then you'd want to subtract whatever number that is here, you want to subtract that squared. Okay, you can investigate this, um, can pause the video at this point and check that um, whatever we have here achieves what is in the previous square bracket. So now we've been able to complete the square, you want to now expand. So now we have negative 2 x minus 1 squared now it's a negative times the negative, so that will be a plus 2. Now we can remove our curtain now and then repeat our 7. So what we have effectively is negative 2, x minus 1 squared, add 9. And this is our f of x. Okay, so following on from here, we now would like to compare what we've arrived at at what the question is requiring us to do. So going back, we want to compare terms, okay? 
So as far as what we've been asked to find is concerned, what will be our P? So here we say our P then is going to be negative 2 because we have negative 2 in front of the X minus 1. And then our Q is going to be negative 1. Whilst our R equals 9. Mm -hmm. So that answers the A part of the question. Now the B part asks something quite interesting. We're meant to work out the maximum value of our f of x. What you should note is the fact that whenever you have completed the square for um, any function, whatever value of whatever value that you find as the constant term here will actually be your maximum or minimum value for your f of x. So we say maximum value of f of x equal to 9. Mm -hmm. Now the second part of it where it asks for the value of x for which this maximum occurs, you go back to your bracket. Mm -hmm. So whatever expression is in that bracket equates that expression to 0 and that would give you x equals 1. So that tells us that the maximum value occurs at x equal to 1. So the coordinates of that maximum value or maximum point is going to be 1, 9. So whenever you have an equation with a negative x squared, you know it's going to be of this form. So the very top of it is your maximum point. And if we were to sketch this on a graph, we'd expect that this is going to be 1, 9. Hence, that is what we need to do for the first two sections of this question. Um, look out for the next video where I look at the last two sections, okay? All right, all the best. And make sure you look over this video again. Um, and if you have any questions, please send them off to me. Okay, thank you, bye.